Do you know how John Williams used combined masses in his orchestration? So let's start learning. Today, we will learn the orchestration process of the soundtrack. We wish you a Merry Christmas from the movie Home Alone. Actually, this piece starts with a four bars entry and then moves on. It is obvious that we can't afford to fully comprehend whole score because of the time restriction. Hence, we will focus on the specific part of a small six bar fragment. I think it will be more interesting and of course easier to understand if we study the construction plan rather than analyze the finished score. Before we start our lecture, I would like to draw your attention to the point that I will convey my message through the author's point of view to better explain to you the secrets of orchestration in this part. As I said before, the texture should be roughly planned before starting the orchestration. So, the melody that we are supposed to orchestrate is on the middle register. As you know, a set of instruments that simply plays a melody we call a device. In terms of its register, this piece is quite suitable for woodwinds, brass or strings. At the same time, the location of the melody in the middle register creates favorable conditions for us to comfortably accommodate other components of the texture. Look here, there is a white space below and above the melodic device. The main essence of orchestration is to fill this space using different masses. Thus, the bass line will be located in the low register. As you know, the C2, C3 register is the area where the bass line sounds the brightest. But, of course, this area can be further expanded with active doublings. See, there is a wide space between the melody and the bass line. Let's use the vertical break method. At the same time, some portion of the method will be applied above the melody. Yes, it might seem a little dark to you right now, but don't worry, I will explain what are these masses. There is still a white space above the melody. Let's apply a different one. One of the interesting masses is the stretch method. In the area where this method is located, Another method, spread, can be easily added. It is true that although both may appear to be mixed, their functions are different, so they are easily combined. So we have made a rough plan and now let's move on to its implementation. A melodic device intended for a small ensemble will be performed by four horns. Of course, this is an option. You can also choose other instruments. You can learn how to use the factor register of instruments by looking at the texture making 1, 1A and 1B lectures. Note that the score is in the C. That is, the instruments are written as they sound, except for the piccolo, contrabass and the contrabass suit. The bass line will be split into actives and shared between the cellos and the contrabasses. Of course, cellos can be doubled with bassoons and double basses with the contrabassoon to make the bass line even stronger and more audible. This is a classic orchestration technique. Let's look at the score as a whole. Slide bells are one of the best ways to add Christmas spirit to your music. The timpani simply plays the first bar. The line under the note is the sign let it vibrate. This sign indicates that the continued sound of the instrument should not be muffled after being struck. Let's listen to how it sounds. Now, let's apply the vertical break method. First, let's find out what it means and how it's used. 
For a clear understanding of this process, I will divide it into three steps. So, the hardware of the first bar is the G major. First, let's share the given code within the brass section. This will not be difficult for you if you have learned the code voicing well. You can use different code voicing techniques like interlocking, overlaying, enclosure or overlapping. Since the French horns play the melody, we'll use the remaining three trumpets, three tenor trombones and the tuba. For this one, let's use the overlaying technique. As you know, this kind of construction is called the spread method, which we have used a lot in our previous textures. For clarity of understanding, I show the instruments in different colors. But don't confuse these colors with the tone color of the instruments. This is just for explanation and is randomly selected. Ok, in this step, the code looks like the whole cube. The next step is to break the cube into several parts. Since this is a 3-4 time signature, we can break it into 3 parts. This is a horizontal break method. The next step is to break the code in a vertical direction. So, you should remove some small cubes from the whole one. For instance, let me delete the second and the third cubes of the trumpets and the first cube of the first and the second trombones. Finally, let me delete the second and the third cubes of the third trombone and tuba. The result will look like this. So, what you should do? Just make a simple code and break it as you want. Then change any pitches or beats. This method will help you to make more complex accompaniments in your textures. If you are not satisfied with the result, just change the cubes or break the code again and again. For example, I'm going to double break some of the cubes to get an interesting texture. Let's Break the first chord of the trombones into three parts. But always check the sound after each step. You can get detailed information about this method from lecture number 6 and the 6a in texture making part. You can also create an infinite number of interesting accompaniments by thinking of each chord as a cube. Now let's get back to the topic. One part of the accompaniment we made using the vertical break method is located below the melody and the other part is located above the melody. That's why we call one underlay and the other overlay. In this piece, John Williams used a tenor trombone instead of a bass trombone. But it doesn't matter if you use a bass trombone in your composition, the result will not change much. Violas double the trombones. The VZ means that the violas themselves should be divided into two parts. Five players should play the upper note and the other five should play the lower one. Let's listen to the whole score. It sounds pretty cool. Thus, we have already laid the foundation of construction. 
Now let's build the top part of the melody. For this, we can simply expand the vertical break area by using the code voicing technique. For example, we can place the woodwinds above the trombones. Three clarinets, three oboes, and three flutes. Finally, we can quickly complete the orchestration process by assigning the melody to the first and second violins and violas. Of course, this kind of texture is also beautiful, but it is quite simple. You can see such examples in classical scores. Let's make the texture not like this, but more colorful and a bit more complex. Instead of expanding the vertical break method, it would be better to apply the stretch method. But what does this method mean and how to get it? First, we will look at the chord tones of the given harmony. The chord of the first bar is the G major, and it consists of notes G, B, and D. If you want to apply the stretch method to the harmony, then you should arrange the chord tones one after the other, not all at once. It doesn't matter what register the chord is in or how long it is. You can transform the chord to any form and register based on the tones in the chord. The movements are free, that is, you can do it down or up. As you can see, I used the G note three times, the D note two times, and the B one time. Note that you can start the stretch method from any note and introduce it with any length, quarter, eighteenths, sixteenths, and etc. But don't think of this method as playing the arpeggios, as I will show you the different types in future lessons. This is simply a zigzag variation of the stretch method. Now, back to the texture. The subtlety of this work lies in filling the free space with the material you have prepared. Since there is a large area above the melody, we can double the material in an active. Let's see what the score looks like. The appearance here should not surprise you, because since it was written for woodwinds in threes, the orchestrator didn't write the same type of instrument at the same time, but rather in passing. That is, the first bar is played by the piccolo and the first flute, and the next bar is played by the first and second flutes. Or, after the first oboe finishes playing, the second oboe immediately continues playing the next bar. But the question here is, can't all instruments play at the same time? This type of passing is mostly used in three cases. Sometimes the given passages are fast and there is no time for the performers to breathe. In this case, space are made for each performer to rest. A second reason is simply to create a stereo panning effect in the orchestra, that is, when the first and the second oboes periodically pass the melody to each other. The third reason is to weaken the power of the woodwinds. One of the interesting points here is the image of the fourth bar. Although it looks different, it is designed using the stretch method. If you look closely, you will see the tones of the D major chord are arranged with quarter notes, one after the other. The same function was used in other instruments. It's quite interesting. Tremolo was used to add some kind of color. Now, let's go back and see what else we can add. As I said earlier, the spread method can be added to the area with the stretch method. Since each of them has a different function, they will not create a conflict. As you know, according 
to the rules of the spread method, a code must be used only once within the bar. There is no limit to node length. It is known that only the first and the second violins are among the remaining instruments. So let's turn the G major chord into four voice and give it to the strings. That's all. Let's listen. So, we applied all the masses according to the plan. You may ask, if these masses are relocatable? Of course, the core principle is to have a plan in mind. Any change can be made taking into account some parameters such as instrument register and playing techniques. For example, we can assign the stretch method to strings and the spread method to woodwinds. As you can see, we got a pretty colorful orchestral texture by applying different methods to each section. Finally, it is time to look at the full orchestra score. Always listen to the texture without melody and with melody, because sometimes the texture is interesting on its own, but when combined with the melody, it doesn't support it. If you liked this lecture and want to learn more about these masses and create different textures of the melody, let's enroll in the course. You can choose one-time or monthly payment masses. Discount coupon links are available on my YouTube and Instagram channels. If you have purchased the first edition of my course on Udemy.com, you can send a request to the following email and get an extra discount. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me at secretsoforchestration at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.